Good morning, everybody. It's great to see you this morning. Um, when uh, w- one or two people are uh, out of the, um, we call it the load-in mix. That's what they call it when you have to set everything up. Uh, so we've been, uh, we're without Terry Monroe this morning, and he does a lot of setup. So when Terry comes back, every time he's away for a day, I always say, hey, Terry, we really, really, really missed you. And... Uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, you'll know, uh, and sometime we'll talk about it, right? Sometime we'll talk about uh, when you worship in a gym, it says some things, uh, some really, really good things, actually, uh, I believe. Uh, that's my heart, anyway. Um, uh, this, ri- this room gets used by a whole bunch of different activities pretty much every week, so, uh, so, uh, and it becomes a sacred place when you show up. And that's, that, that's the reality of it. So we set up, we take down, that's what we do. Uh, let me just say a couple things that are, uh, I, I asked for notes, I keep getting notes. I've never had so many notes and since uh, I was dating Sue. She used to send me notes, usually in the mail. Actually, uh, since COVID, I get notes from my grandson. So when COVID was uh, in, the, in the throes of isolation and all that stuff, I started writing my grandson letters, and now he writes back to me. And we, he just lives in Dundas, but we write each other uh, all the time. And he tries to send stuff in Canada Post that he probably shouldn't send. He, he sent me a loony the other day, and I, I was surprised they even you know, put it through the machines. Anyway, uh, please uh, do be in prayer for some folks, okay? We be in prayer for, uh, for Bob? Uh, in these days, he's, uh, he's in the hospital, he's in ICU, uh, he's, he's working hard to try and get better, and so pray for him. Uh, pray for him, and pray for Bev. She's there uh, 24 well, seven. She's there seven. I probably won't let her stay 24, but I know she would. So pray for Bev and for Bob, please. Um, thanks to everybody that came out to the dinner uh, last, that seems like a, a year ago. I know it was just last Saturday night, but uh, thanks to, for that. Um, it was a great time, and if you didn't get there this year, make sure you get on the list for next year. Um, I've been handed a a note uh, this morning by uh, George and then reminded by Len, the, uh, those are the people that keep the lights on around here and the heat going and all that stuff. Uh, today, uh, this week is kind of the, the last opportunity if you wanted to top up your donations. Um, uh, I suppose somebody could tell you where we are in that sort of annual giving thing. Uh, probably a little bit behind uh, our budget just because that's kind of how it works. But um, but uh, please, if you need to make a, a year-end sort of a contribution, please feel free to do so. And um, t- today or t- this week, uh, George and uh, George counts on Tuesdays. So if you need to bring something into the office on Tuesday morning early, uh, we'll be here about nine o'clock. Um, but today would be good. Um, the uh, men's breakfast sign-up sheet is out in the uh, out in the foyer. Uh, please also be in prayer for uh, for Art. Uh, Art is uh, Liz's partner, and he's had some heart surgery this week. So uh, be in prayer for him. And uh, I'm reading notes here. Uh, we we asked last week if you would uh, keep Nikki and her husband Don, especially in in your prayers. Uh, Don is diagnosed with cancer. Um, I'm going to just uh, remind you that Christmas Eve service, 6 o'clock, uh, it's out on the sign. If you forget, uh, just go out, walk out, and just stand out in front and look at the sign. Maybe if five or six or ten of you do that, it'll kind of show the community there's a crowd. Uh, we were out this week, and I don't know, some of you got a chance to get involved in this, but uh, uh, the band uh, and a few of us who were assigned to be singers uh, by Sue, pretty much assigned us to do that. Um, we went over into the neighborhood next door and sang some Christmas carols. Well, I want to tell you, that was an interesting response. Uh, nobody screamed. Uh, we stopped some traffic, right? Uh, I had to put my four-way flashers on. That's a big thing. Uh, but uh, there were a lot of people listening to those Christmas carols being sung, and a, few, a couple people came over and joined us. Hmm. And we handed out about 50 uh, Christmas Eve service flyers. So, so uh, come on out to Christmas Eve, 6:30. Um, we six o'clock. Sorry, six o'clock. Sorry. We um, did a bit of a poll a week ago, and Christmas falls on 
Christmas on a Sunday this year, and we're going to do the Christmas Eve service at six six o'clock, <laughs> six o'clock on Saturday night. Uh, so we've uh, done a little poll, and uh, many of you said no. We'll, we'd rather just kind of stay home on Christmas morning. So that's what we'll do. We'll stay home on Christmas morning. I'll miss you. I'll probably be preaching a sermon to Sue and or hanging out with the grandkids. Uh, but that's, that's the plan for Christmas morning. Um, we'll put something on our website or on our, uh, and our, our Facebook to say so, all right? Uh, if I missed anything, I'm sorry, but if I missed anything, take a look at the loop afterwards and uh, it'll just uh, show you everything I've forgotten to say. Now, we've got a couple people helping us out in the service today, which I hope you're gonna kinda get used to. Uh, we're gonna try and tag a few folks um, uh, each week to just just help out a little bit. We need some more voices up here. That's what I say. So, um, and in a minute or two, our Advent wreath uh, will happen. But for now, uh, Arch is going to come and um, lead us in a carol. Morning, folks. Lovely morning. We're going to sing, angels from the realms of glory. All those angels, eh? So we are going to sing. The angels are going to sing now. And the band's going to lead us, Roger. Let's do two verses. How's that? All right, way to go. Angels from the realms of glory. Come and worship, worship Christ, the newborn King. Shepherds in the field abiding, watching o'er their flocks by night. God with the man is now residing, thunder shines the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Now we're going to repeat this verse together and then we will sing the next two verses, three verses, whatever it is, we're going to go to the end, okay? Shepherds in the field abiding, watching our flocks by night. God with men is now of society. Yonder shines the infant light. Let's sing it together. Birds in the watching our fair. Suddenly the Lord ascended in his temple shall appear. Come Good morning, everyone. 
The first Sunday of Advent, we lit the prophecy candle in our Advent wreath. It is also called the candle of hope. We light it again today as we remember Jesus, who was born Christ and King. And we remember that he will come again to fulfill all of God's promises to us. The second Sunday of Advent, we lit the Bethlehem candle, the candle of love. We light it again today as we remember that Christ, who was born in Bethlehem, has come as Savior and Redeemer. The babe of Bethlehem has come out of love to bring redemption. Last Sunday, we lit the third candle of Advent. It is the shepherd candle, the candle of joy. When the angel Gabriel told Mary that a special child would be born to her, she was filled with joy. She sang a song that began with the words, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit has rejoiced in God my savior. The fourth candle of Advent is the candle of peace represented by the angel who proclaimed peace for the shepherds. Peace is a word that we hear a lot. It's one of the things we hope for. Christ bought peace when he first came to us and he will bring everlasting peace when he comes again. The prophet Isaiah called Christ the Prince of Peace when Jesus came. He taught people the importance of being peacemakers. He said that those who make peace shall be called the children of God. We light the candle of peace to remind us that Jesus is the Prince of Peace, that through him peace is found. Peace is light, like a light shining in a dark place. As we look at the candle, we celebrate the peace we find in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for the peace that you give us. We ask that as we wait for your promises to come true and for Christ to come again, that you would remain present with us. Help us today and every day to worship you, to hear your word, and to do your will by sharing your peace with each other. We ask it in the name of the one who was born in Bethlehem. Amen. Thanks to everybody that uh, participated in the Advent uh, candle lighting. Um, I know that the um, hardest part is to get that childproof lighter to go. I know, I struggle with it every time, but, uh, but thanks. I, I, hope, uh, I hope you've seen past the, uh, the click, click, click to the, to the heart of what's being said. And um, if, uh, if, you, if you wanted to, um, we could, uh, we could probably send you those Advent readings if you'd like them. Um, just uh, shoot me an email, we can do that. But uh, the, uh, the Advent candles, uh, each representing a different uh, aspect of, uh, of the Christmas story and today's story, the story of peace. Um, we've, uh, Roger and I, have kind of left the um, Christmas carols to the band until Christmas Eve. We're gonna do a couple on Christmas Eve that uh, should, be, should be fun, but um, this morning, I want you to look for the Christmas story uh, in these three songs that we're going to share. Uh, it's a powerful message that doesn't just show up at Christmas. Uh, these are songs that we sing all year long. And um, so uh, let's, uh, let's try this together. Come out of sadness. 
Come out of sadness from wherever you've been Come broken hearted, let rescue begin Come find your mercy, oh sinner come kneel Cause earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal Earth has no sorrow your face, wanderer come home, cause you're not too far, so lay down your hurt, lay down your heart, come as you are. hope for the hopeless and all those who've strayed come sit at the table and come taste the grace there's rest for the weary rest that endures cause earth has no sorrow that heaven can cure so lay down your burdens lay down your shame all who are broken, lift up your face. Wanderer, come home, cause you're not too far. So lay down your hurt, lay down your heart, come as you sorrow that heaven can't heal. So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your face. This next song we're going to share together is um, a song that we practiced uh, and sang a couple times, a number of times actually, at Easter time. And um, uh, what I want you to notice about this song is that the first two verses are Christmas. Um, and uh, in fact, today, what I think we're going to do uh, back in the uh, audio video department, which is uh, increased by a lot today, uh, if you're looking at the recording afterwards. Uh, we've, uh, we've doubled our technology back there and we've got uh, um, uh, two cameras. I, I know, I know. Just <laughs> and the second camera uh, came at the cost of, Roger tells me, five bucks. So uh, high tech, uh, high tech. But um, uh, what we're gonna do, and I'm, I'm really kind of trying to shoot a note back to, uh, to Michaela. We're gonna sing verse one chorus, verse 2, chorus, verse 1, chorus, because that's the Christmas part of this song, right? So verse 1 and 2, and we'll repeat uh, verse 1.
remember this song. In the darkness we were waiting, without hope, without light, till from heaven you came running. There was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets. To a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt. The chorus. Praise the Father. Praise the Son. Praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, a praise forever to the King of kings. Kingdom come and to reconcile the lost, to redeem the whole creation. You did not despise the cross, for even in your suffering you saw the other side. Knowing this was our salvation, Jesus, for our sake you died. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. Let's just sing this first verse again. It's really the Christmas story. In the darkness we were waiting Without hope, without light Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty, to the King of Kings. Praise forever. Praise forever to the King of Kings. Now just before we share a prayer together, um, we're going to sing um, this uh, next song, which is uh, also about the King, King Jesus. And uh, I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted, you were condemned. I'm alive and well, your spirit lives within me because you died and rose again. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken I'm accepted you were condemned and I'm alive and well your spirit is within me because you died and rose again amazing love Love, I know it's true. 
true It's my joy to honor you In all I do I honor you I'm forgiven Because you were forsaken I'm accepted You were condemned And I'm alive and well Your spirit lives within me Because you died and rose again Amazing love, how die for me amazing love I know it's true and it's my joy to honor you in all I do I honor you and you are my King, you are my King, Jesus, you are my King, Jesus, you are my King, amazing love, how can it be? My king should die for me. Amazing love, I know it's true. And it's my joy to honor you. All I do, I honor you. In all this room there are worshipers and you know that we come today to uh, to lift up your name in this place that is separate from our day to day we come to be strengthened and equipped and and simply to worship to to lift up our hearts and praise to say some prayers to read your word we know, Lord, though, that the work that you do in our hearts is really just to prepare us for the work that you want to do in this world. So, Lord, as we come today, let us be mindful of what you want to do in us as we gather. Lord, today we're praying for, for Dawn and for Art, for Bob. praying for the Feltham family these days. And Lord, right now in our hearts, there's a flood of people and names that is washing over us. And so in the miraculous way that we, you do that, will you just listen to those names and hear them? And be very close to those people that we are lifting up in our hearts because it's not just about the names that are said through a microphone. But you hear our hearts amazing amazing love father as we move through the christmas ahead of us the celebrations as we gather with family will you be at the front of those gatherings will you be at the head of the, those tables and help us each one of us who who know you in our hearts to bring a word to those who gather Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love. 
amazing love I know it's true and it's my joy to honor you in all I do I Notice the scripture reading is taken from Luke chapter 2, verse 8. And if you um, were here early enough, didn't have to be here early, and got the scripture reading from Sue or somebody, uh, you should have that in your hands. So get that piece of paper in your hands or open up your Bible to Luke chapter 2. the angel's song, and uh, it's taken from the uh, authorized version, the King James Version, and uh, some of you will be breathing a sigh of relief about that, because this is what you memorized when you were a kid, uh, and uh, certainly what I remember memorized, and the words just kind of kind of make Christmas right for me. So uh, I'm going to read it. You can read along, and that's, uh, that's okay, because in a few minutes, you're going to get to do the responsive reading on the screen, I'm pretty sure. So, um, so allow me to just speak these words over you, but in a few minutes, we're going to say them to each other, all right? So the angel song. And there were in that same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Amen. The band's going to share with us.
There's not much that's better about Christmas than um, listen to a Salvation Army band play carols, is there? I don't know, we just get to do that. Um, and I think we take it for granted, probably. It's, uh, it's something that we, uh, we get to experience every year for most of us. And uh, so thanks, uh, thanks for that uh, to our band members. Um, I, I, I don't know how you remember things. How do you remember things? Well, you know, I'm obviously I've got, I've uh, taken to notes, and I said to somebody right back there when I left the sticky note that was the last thing that somebody said to me stuck to that table back there. Uh, how do you remember stuff? Well, you know, you can write yourself a note or two. Uh, let me just uh, flip over to the. There we go. Uh, you can write yourself a note or two, but that's kind of dangerous, isn't it? Uh, you end up with these stickies. I was in somebody's office just the other day, and it wasn't anybody here, but uh, I was in their office, and they had these yellow stickies all over the place, stuck to the computer screens. They're just stuck everywhere. And I think that their system of remembering things was that each time they did one of those things, they grabbed the sticky and tossed it in the trash. And I, well, okay, I guess that works for you, but it was, it was kind of a nightmare when I kind of looked at it, like how do you keep anything straight? Writing stuff down is uh, is is one way. Imagine um, imagine in my younger years because I didn't I didn't keep a lot of sermon notes. I keep a few more now because um, I find that the older you get, the harder it is to remember stuff. Um, people can tell me things like now. And in a minute or two, it's gone to somewhere, and I got to go back. It's embarrassing, isn't it? You know, you got to go back and retrieve that information. Now, maybe it's just me. It's probably just me, right? That you, nobody else struggles with that. I can tell by the look on your face because you're just looking at me. No, I can't relate to this at all, Brad. Yeah, well, but but we've got so much stuff to remember now. Okay, so I, I was just thinking about it. We got pa passwords. How do you do that? Right, and then you you start typing the same password. Um, uh, one of mine is uh, Adidas. Adidas. Now, why Adidas? All day I dream about Sue. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> but, but how do you remember? Like you got a password. I got a password to get into my car. Like, how do you remember all this stuff? And then you get a password keeper, and the password keeper starts doing an audit on you, right? And it says, uh, you've used the same password three times on three different things. And, that, you know, so the password keeper starts yelling at you. How do you keep it all straight? And then lose your password. Oh, sure. I was trying to get an air flight on Air Canada. I know I signed into there sometime three, four years before the pandemic. And now I can't remember my password, and now i got to make phone calls after phone calls to just, to just prove that it's me, right? So passwords and stuff like that, really hard. How about combinations? You know, I was thinking about this this week. When I was younger, the only password that I really needed to know was the combination to my locker at high school. Do you remember that? Imagine if that was the only thing you had to remember. Now it's gotten so, so complex. Well, how do you remember things? Well, I'm sure you write it down, but writing stuff down is kind of dangerous these days, isn't it? Because if you write down your bank password, and, you know, that's not a good idea, so they say, uh, but you write stuff down, now it's compromised, and somebody else could access your private informations, and uh, that, that's, uh, not a, that's what's dangerous. Uh, have any of you... You, you can sheepishly put up your hand if you've had your identity uh, compromised. You can sheepishly put up your hand, because if you do, you'll know. That is a nightmare. That's a nightmare. When somebody taps in, and they, how do they do it? I don't know. They hack into your cell phone somehow, or uh, one of my kids has been hacked a few times. He's, just, he's kind of used to it. He knows exactly what he's got to do when he gets compromised. So how do we remember the important stuff? Uh, like if, we, if we're not writing it down, and then the problem with remembering the important stuff, like the really important stuff, is that we carry so much stuff in our heads. I used to carry a book with a lot of notes in it, and, and it, the book just got so cumbersome. Now I'm carrying an iPad, and I, I t I, it's, it's a lot of stuff that we got to remember. What would happen? What would happen if God 
was to, was to say something to you in the middle of a Sunday morning church service at Winterbury Heights Community Church. What if, what, imagine, what if God was actually, spoke something deep into your heart? What if he did? Would you remember that? Because unless you write it down, and we don't write stuff down, we oftentimes don't have anything to write with, you know, kind of thing. And would you remember that when you got home? Like by the time, so, and it's happened to me. I'm, I'm not just preaching at you, I'm preaching to me. I've been in places where, where I know it was the voice of God. I know it was the voice of God. And he was saying, you need to do this in this direction. And by the time I got home, or by the time I woke up, because sometimes these things come to us in the middle of the night, I couldn't remember what it was. And it was important. And sometimes those things flood back to you, and sometimes they don't. But God is still doing that. I like to use a little phrase that I heard once, kind of attaches up to Moses. And, and I say it in my own heart, in my own prayers quite often. I might even say it in a prayer over you once. But it says, and I just, this is an original, it says the bush is still burning. and God is still speaking. Because he does that. That's God. That's how he works. Well, on this night that is referred to on that piece of paper we gave you this morning. God spoke. He spoke through angels. Now, if you've ever been visited by an angel, like, you want to talk to me, and I won't discount that. I promise you, I won't. We would talk, and we would, we would try to, because I, I, I would want to know about that. I, I have never been visited by an angel. In Luke's gospel, just the first two chapters, the angels show up like three, four times. And each time, it comes with fear. And the angel says, don't be afraid. Said it to Zechariah. We looked at that a couple weeks ago. Said it to Mary, to the, to the, to the shepherds. There was, there was great fear. We might just zoom in on that one word, or those two words on Christmas Eve. Sore afraid, it says. Sore afraid. But the angels show up. Imagine this, if the angels showed up at your work. Because that's what they did. It just happened that the shepherds slept at work, right? They had a, they had a, a 24-7 sort of a shift or a 24-hour shift, sort of like firefighters do uh, these days. And the, the angels showed up at the shepherds' work. Uh, like, there's got to be a rule against that, right? That we're not supposed to, that's not supposed to happen, is it? But they show up at the shepherds' work. And we're, we read the story just like we read it. And, and I think what we're going to do now is just, just read this story. And, and Michaela's going to put the first slide up. That's, uh, there it is. So I'll, I'll do that in a second. But what, what I want you to think about is that while the shepherds are speaking, while the shepherds are speaking, simultaneously, the things that you read just before in the first seven verses of Luke chapter 2 are happening. Maybe just before we read this, we should take a look at those. It came to pass in those days. The decree went out among Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed or registered. This census went first took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. Joseph went to Galilee, up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, to Bethlehem, because he was the ho of the house and lineage of David. Remember this story? You've, you've read it a couple Christmases, haven't you? This is the Christmas story to be registered with his wife Mary, betrothed to be his wife who was with child. So it was while they were there that she delivered. She brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in that same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. We'll go to the next slide. There you are. And lo, 
the angel of the Lord, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly... Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. The angels visited the shepherds at their workplace. At the same time as this visitation took place, it's quite possible that Jesus was being born just a little ways away in Bethlehem. Simultaneously, as the angels were singing this song, that Jesus was being born in Bethlehem. And the message to the angels is an important one. Sorry, the message of the angels to the shepherds is an important one. It says, Lo, uh, in the city of David, I'm sorry, the, the angel of the Lord came upon them, the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. They were terrified. Terrified is the, is the word that is used. Uh, probably the best translation is they were terrified. As the angels continued to sing their song, not only was there a voice that was almost too much, too much to take, the glory of the Lord shone around them. Let's pray. Father, I'm not sure what's going on with Bev and Bob, but obviously there's a, a moment, an emergency, it sounds, seems. Will you be right there with them? Will you be right there at their side? Will you bless them right now? We pray in Jesus' name. The Song of the Angels. A powerful song that you and I can't even, can't even fathom. The noise that would have taken place, the music that would have, would have happened, the harmonies that would have taken place, the, 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 the brilliant light that would have been shining. It says that the glory of the Lord shone all around them. We can't light lights like that. We can't. I, I've looked at some amazing sunrises and sunsets. Don't hold a candle to what was going on on that night with the shepherds. The message of the angels is this. Don't be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings. This is a good news message. The gospel, it says. The gospel is coming to you. I bring you good tidings of great joy. Not just your everyday average kind of happiness. This was great joy that would have come from the angels and been translated to the shepherds which is for all the people, for all the people. So here's the, the message of the shepherds that I really want you to receive this morning, that the message that was given to the shepherds, and we're going to hear it in just a moment, was sung to them or sung over them, it appears, but it was a message for all time. It was a message for the world. Good tidings, great joy, which shall be to all the people, not just those gathered in the field that night, not just those that might have seen this bright light, but to all the people. And here's the message. Born to you this day in the city of Bethlehem is a Savior who is Christ the Lord. There's the message. There's the message. Did you hear it? Born to them and to us that day in the city of David, that is Bethlehem, is Christ the the Savior. Now the problem is, as I experience it, I've been around for a few Christmases, 60 some, some I don't even remember because I was too young. And the things I remember about Christmases um, aren't maybe so great. We've got the family album. Do you? Oftentimes the cameras come out at Christmas time, don't they? 
for about the first 20 years of my service in the Salvation Army, the pictures of me at Christmas don't look so good because a Salvation Army officer at Christmas time in small town, Eastern Ontario, basically worked yourself till you were sick. So the pictures of me at Christmas time show me sitting in the chair, white as a ghost, basically with the flu. <laughs> Great joy, good tidings, hardly. That's not how we're supposed to remember Christmas. That's not what the, the angels wanted us to remember Christmas. Unto you is born this day a Savior. And there's the other problem with Christmas, is it kind of gets ho-hum, doesn't it? Oh, a Savior. Huh. Huh. The shepherds were overjoyed when they heard that. The same message comes to you. Unto you this day is born the Savior of the world, the only one, the one and only Son of God, the only one that could ever be an atonement for your sins so that you could turn from the way you were going and do a 180 and go the other way towards God instead of away from him. That's the message of Christmas. Unto you this day is born a Savior, who is Christ the Lord, and this they were told, shall be the sign. You shall go and you shall find this babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, that's swaddling cloths, and lying in a feed trough. Oh, I know, we call it a manger. We've just pretty it up. It was a place where the cows ate. A very simple, rude, and bare place where you would put the feed for the cattle. And that's where the Savior of the world was born. The message, the message was given. As I was studying, this, this kind of hit me. The message was given to a bunch of nobodies, shepherds. They were pretty low on the social scale, but God gave the message to shepherds in the middle of nowhere. God gave the most important message the world has ever heard to a bunch of nobodies in the middle of nowhere in the middle of the night. You can write that one down and contemplate it this week, will you? I'm going to. What were you thinking, God? You gave the most important message the world has ever heard to a group of nobodies in the middle of nowhere in the middle of the night. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Because there's hope for me. If God, if God would share the most important message he's ever shared with them, there's hope for us, isn't there? If he would cause his son, allow his son to be born in a manger because they wouldn't take him in the inn, the inn was full. If that is how God operates, I'm in. I'm all in. Thank you, God for the way that you've communicated this message to us. Well, here it is, the problem. Do you believe the Christmas message deep enough? I'm saying deep down in your soul, deep enough. Does that gospel, that good news of Jesus the Savior, burn in you in such a way that not only do you believe it, but like the shepherds, you got to tell it. You got to say something. Have you ever had that kind of a message? Have you ever had that kind of news in you? Oh, I know you have. Somebody tells you something, and you just got to tell somebody. That's the message of Christmas given to the shepherds in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the night. They went and sought confirmation. When confirmed, they took that message and shared it with anybody that would listen. How about you this Christmas? You got your Christmas decorations out? Got the lights up, got the tree up. That's important, but the message that's burning in your heart is even more important. Maybe take some time. Take a yellow marker and just highlight the message of the angels. 
the message of the angels. Fear not, for I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be all to all people. So highlight verse 10. And then take another color and highlight verse 11, because this is the message. For unto you was born that day a Savior in the city of David, who was, is, continues to be, will be for all time the Savior of the world, the only one, the only one, can take your sinful past, wipe it away, wash it with his blood, turn you 180 degrees the other direction. Instead of moving away from him, you move towards him for the rest of your life. Let's pray. Father, you said peace when you sent those angels. Peace on earth, goodwill to men. Sometimes we don't see a lot of peace. But Lord, in this Christmas season, when we take care in the way that we handle people, in the way that we respond to people, in the way that we react to things or don't react to things, we bring peace to a house when we're careful about the laws that we have to obey in these days in our world, in our country, when we're careful about the way that we conduct ourselves in the community, we bring peace to a community. When we answer somebody's harsh word with a soft response, we confirm peace in our hearts, Lord, in these days. Will you bring peace to us? As we proclaim the angel song, the message of heaven, with great joy to all the people. Our song that we're going to share this morning, um, and Sylvia's going to help us out with that, is going to show up on the screen right here. Have you any room for Jesus? He who bore your load of sin as he knocks and asks admission, sinner, let him in. Room for Jesus, King of glory, the chorus says. Beautiful song that we're just going to breathe out. If God is prompting you to come and kneel, come and kneel as he prompts your heart. Let's sing this together. Have you any room for Jesus? He who bore your load of sin. As he acts and asks admission, sinner, won't you let him in? Room for Jesus, King. Not a place that he can enter in the heart for which he died. Room for Jesus, King of glory. Hasten now his word obey. store widely open bid him enter while you may third verse says have any time for Jesus 
as in grace he calls once again. Oh, today is time accepted. Tomorrow you may call in vain. Room for Jesus, King of glory, Son of God, born in a manger in Bethlehem for you. Let's move to the fourth verse, and we'll sing that together uh, as our closing song uh, today, be just, before, uh, just before we sing another carol. So let's go to the last verse. There it is. Let's sing it together. Room and time now give to Jesus. Soon will pass God's day of grace. Soon your heart be cold and silent. And your Savior's pleading cease. Room for Jesus, King of glory. Hasten now his word obey. Swing your heart's door widely open. Bid him enter. Our closing uh, carol is uh, Come Emmanuel, and uh, Reverend Wayne is going to lead us in that. Our closing song this morning is O Come, O Come, and the band is going to lead us. Um, there are five verses, and we're going to be kind to the band. They'll play uh, the first two, and then we'll pause, and then we'll read the third, and then we'll sing the last two together. Would you stand with me, please, as we sing this beautiful carol? Come, oh, come. Let's read together verse uh, 3. O come, thou rod of Jesse, free thine own from Satan's tyranny. From depths of hell thy people save, and give them victory o'er the grave. Let's sing together verses 4 and 5, please. O come, thou days bring come. Yeah.
Let's pray together. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful season. We thank you for the story of Christmas, the story that tells us that Jesus Christ came from heaven, that he was born in a manger, that he grew to be a man, and that indeed he is the savior of the world. We pray for each person who's here this morning and those who may be listening through other means. We pray that this would be a blessed season, that families would join together and that there would be a love that would have come from you and that there would be happiness in a world where over the last few years we have dealt with the pandemic and we have dealt with sadness and in many times isolation. May this be a, a wonderful time of year. Bless us today. We pray in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. For our benediction this morning, we're going to sing, O oh, Father, let thy love remain. O oh, Father, let thy love remain. O oh, Son, may I thy likeness gain. O oh, Spirit, stay. God bless you.